45. Winston Churchill, in a cable to President Truman, said, I view with profound misgivings the descent of an iron curtain between us and everything to the eastward. So, four years later, the North Atlantic Security Pact was signed, and NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, was born. Its headquarters, Paris. 1955. Western Germany was invited to become the 15th member of NATO. And on NATO's 11th anniversary, it's a German band that leads the International Guard of Honor. Germany's contribution to NATO, 12 divisions, all under the direct command of NATO. Here, German troops march with men from Britain, the Netherlands, Canada and Belgium. A great part of Central Europe is mountainous, and to defend it, trained mountain troops are needed. Young German recruits take their oaths in the shadow of the war memorial at Mittenwald. Everybody knows Germany's military history, but there was no enthusiasm among the younger generation to join a new German army even under NATO. It needed years of persuasion before Germany was ready to shoulder her responsibility with the rest of the free world. Compulsory military service was introduced. Mountain troops need mountain transport, and that means mules, not for riding, but to carry arms, food and equipment. As long as there are roads, the troops ride in lorries, and so do the mules. Mules may be stubborn, but they're not stupid. So why be stubborn when there's a free lift going? There's plenty of work ahead when they get to the training area. When the going gets too tough for the lorries, the mules take over. Mules are a cross between a male donkey and a female horse. They are ideally suited for carrying loads in mountain territory, as they combine the patience, endurance and sure-footedness of the donkey with the strength and courage of the horse. These particular mules come from Italy. But even the sure-footed mules can go no further than this, and from now on, the men are on their own. When a ravine like this has to be crossed, it's up to the mountain engineers to construct a footbridge. You'd be wasting your time trying to persuade a mule to cross here. You might think that only a madman would take an attacking army across mountains like this. But over 2,000 years ago, Hannibal crossed the Alps with his elephants, and that lesson has never been forgotten. Soon the troops have reached the vast snowfield, and here their day's training begins in earnest. Skiing isn't an easy art at the best of times, and skiing with weapons and equipment can be a very hazardous business. If you're lucky, you might get a lift up the mountain from a passing helicopter. It saves a long, dreary uphill trudge. Of course, taking a lift up has the disadvantage of getting you into battle just that much sooner. But a battle is a battle however you arrive there, and it's no place to stand about and admire the scenery. We're still not at the top. This mountain seems to go on forever. When you come to a bit you can't climb up honestly, you bang a piece of ironmongery into a convenient crack, tie a loop of rope onto it, and you've got yourself a foothold. On the really sticky bits, the men move one at a time, the others on the rope acting as anchors in case of a slip. But where the going is easier, the rope of men climb together. Soldiers are trained always to keep off the skyline. But skylines are everywhere on mountains and risks have to be taken. 9,000 feet and still climbing. And what happens when they get to the top? Well, what goes up must come down. This is known as abseiling. It's not as hard as it looks, once you've got used to the idea of leaning out backwards over space.
This is much trickier. But wounded men have to be got down too. And if he's not too seriously hurt, this is as good a way as any. For seriously injured men, a rescue appliance called an Akia is used. This was developed in Finland and is now used throughout the world. Alpine troops have rescued many injured civilian climbers with this piece of equipment. Injured climbers die as often from shock and exposure as from their injuries. So in a rescue operation, speed is essential in getting the wounded person to hospital. And here the helicopter comes in useful again. A wounded man can be whisked from an alpine snowfield to an operating theater in a matter of minutes. Not all their training is done on snow. Here the recruits train in normal infantry attack. Watched by critical observers from the French and German armies. Mortars always were inclined to be noisy, and they don't seem to have changed much. When the enemy position has been nicely softened up with mortar fire, it's time to go into the attack. And now it's the enemy's chance to get some of their own back. Their period of compulsory military service lasts for 12 months. It isn't really long enough to train a soldier but few people in Germany today would agree to more. They are very young, these men. A conscript army always is. Perhaps they are too young to find it ironical that some of the weapons they are handling so skillfully were manufactured in Israel. Joint maneuvers with other NATO forces are routine. Here, British and German tank commanders plan an attack. The British squadron leader gives his orders to the troop leaders. Meanwhile, the crew share a friendly cup of tea. The tank commanders return to their tanks and the operation is about to begin. This is to be a leapfrog attack. The German tanks will give covering fire while the British tanks advance. Then the British will cover a German advance. Today, the heirs of the Desert Rats and the Africa Corps work together for their mutual defense. No one suggests this work is particularly noble, but few doubt that it's necessary. 